I want to show you a, a discovery that's been made that's very, very recent, and I think it's rather exciting. Uh, there's a journal called the Journal of the Royal Statistical Society. And there's another journal called Statistical Science. These are journals of mathematical statisticians. And were either you or I to look at one of these journals, we would probably tend to read them upside down because they're full of uh, very complex mathematical formulas that the average person wouldn't understand. But in order to have an article published in one of these journals, it must be juried. And this particular article that I'm going to be telling you about was called Equidistant Letter Sequence in the book of Genesis. And several Hebrew scholars took the book of Genesis there, there's the magazine that it's in if you need to write down the name of the uh, dates but they took the book of Genesis and using a computer they discovered equidistant letter sequences they found embedded in the text of the Hebrew Bible the names of people number one now, not people that like Moses and that sort of thing, but people who lived in the 1900s. It included not only their names, but the day they were born, the day they died, and the cities they were born and died in. Now, these were in the Hebrew text, not, you know, written straight out, but they were equidistant letter sequences. In other words, like every third letter would spell their name, or every fourth letter, or something like this. It could be across, down, diagonally, and only a computer could could pull all of this information out. The men that they found, the names of the people that they found, were people that lived in the 5th century, 6th century, 10th century, 19th century. Now the Bible says in the book of Revelations, this book, the book of life. And I, I wondered after I saw this article, I wondered if when people are removing these things, if in fact they are removing their own names from the book of life, because he said if you will take from the words of the prophecy of this book, God will take your part out of the book of life. And so it may be that our names are written in the Bible. And the day we're born, the day we die, and the city we're born and died in. And he, it, it could be the very Lamb's book of life itself. You know, The Bible says that Jehoiakim in the Old Testament begat Jaconias. And that's an obscure kind of fact that most people don't know. But when you read the book of Matthew, it said Josiah begat Jaconias, and that would appear to be a contradiction. But what God did is he took Jehoiakim's name out of the Bible, because Jehoiakim in, in Jeremiah chapter 36 cut the prophecy of Jeremiah. He destroyed it. And so God took his name out of the genealogy in Matthew chapter 1. So uh, God will do what he says he will do. Now, two Harvard and two Yale mathematicians took this statistical science article and evaluated it and they said the chances of this happening are one in 50 quadrillion and these two unsaved or four unsaved scholars said quote the phenomena cannot be attributed to anything within the known physical universe they were astonished and um, I think it's very exciting to know that we have the very words of God he said the words that I've spoken unto you the same will judge you in the last day and if God's going to judge us by those very words he must give us each and every single word Now, there's an interesting sidelight to what's happened here in this research in statistical science and that is the Hebrew text that they used here is the Hebrew text called the Ben Hakim or rabbinic Bible that underlies the King James Version all right they tried the same mathematical analysis with the Samaritan Pentateuch and it didn't work. Um, it does not work with the manuscripts underlying the New International Version, the New American Standard Version, the Living Bible, Good News for Modern Man, Contemporary English Version. It doesn't work with that Hebrew text. That is a different Hebrew text. It's called the Stuttgart edition. And it's a corrupt edition that was created around the turn of the century by a gentleman named Rudolf Kittel. Now, Rudolf Kittel, when you look his name up in the um, uh, Jewish Encyclopedia, you will find that he is, number one, anti-Semitic, and number two, has contributions in his writings from the Hellenistic mystery religions. And so for those people who knew him at that time, um, he, he appeared to be an anti-Semitic person in his writings, and so 
the Jewish people have never accepted his Hebrew translation. However, when you go into a Christian bookstore today, what you will find is that Hebrew text underlying the NIV and the NASB and these modern translations. And that's very much in part why they are so different. But I can't imagine God using an anti-Semitic person. As a matter of fact, Rudolf Kittel's son Gerhard um, was tried and convicted of war crimes uh, in the slaughter of uh, the Jewish people. He was Hitler's high priest and he created slanderous propaganda against the Jewish people. So his whole family had been anti-Semitic. And fortunately, the King James Bible does not use that Hebrew text. 